Hello there, RC world. Welcome to the OAGRC. I am going to do a video today taking you through these two awesome buggies. The Kyosho Optima Mid from 1987 and the Tamiya Top Force Evo from 1992. Now, the reason that I'm looking at these two buggies is they are the latest additions to the OAG fleet for the Orchard Raceway. And these two will be competing head-to-head -head in the vintage four-wheel drive category, which also includes the Tamiya Hotshot and also the Tamiya Thunder Dragon, last year's champion. Now, I think one of these two is probably going to win this season. But which one? So what I thought I'd do is take you through the pros and cons of each one because they are very, very unique and also have a lot of the same similarities. So let's start off with a little bit of history. Now, the Optima Mid came out in 1987. It was Kyosho's first belt-driven RC. And it came out at the same time as the Hotshot 2 was in 1987. The Super Sabre, which we've recently had a re-release of from Tamiya. And the Thundershot, all three of those came out in 1987. So they were on the racetracks at the same time this thing was, which seems mighty unfair, really. And I'll show you why in a little bit. Uh, the year before, in 1986, we had the Big Wig, the Super Shot and the Boomerang. And that they were going up against the Turbo Optima, which is also a lovely bit of kit as well. Um, and I think it was this that really prompted Tamiya to deep in with their... Uh, Evante in 1988 and I think this had an awful lot to do with it because it was probably dominating the racetracks back in the day. It had an alloy underplate which for me you will see under there are protected with a chassis protector now to keep that under, uh, chassis plate nice and slick. Got an under tray on there. It had the motor inside the chassis so the motor is mounted back here this side just in there, you should be able to see it behind the shocks. Uh, so it was a mid-position motor. Um, and most of the motors hung out the back of these things back in the day. And this one moved it forward there for a better centre of gravity. The Raider, interestingly, in 1990 also had its motor in the same position. Which I didn't realise as a kid. I wish I'd known about that because I could have said, oh yeah, it's way better. It's like the Optima Mid. Uh, it had gear diffs, ball bearings throughout. Coil spring overfill dampers, which you can see here. Um, it had... An FRP double deck. So inside, it's got an FRP plate that sits. We'll take the cover off in a little bit and show you what's inside. It dominated the racetracks in the 1980s, certainly in the late 80s, mainly because it was highly tunable. And it was well regarded for being very robust, which I hope is the case when I'm slamming into trees out on the Orchard Raceway. So in contrast, this came out in 1992. So five years later, after the introduction of the Optima Mid, and this came out around the same time as the Terra Conqueror, which was based on the DF01 chassis, which is where this started off the Manta Ray. Uh, the Dynastorm, which is a two-wheel drive. Um, Tamiya really at the time were focusing very much on their on-road chassis, not on their off-road buggies. And this was, I think, a last-ditch attempt to try and create a, a race thoroughbred buggy to compete on the buggy tracks of the 1990s. Kyosho had moved on to the Lazy ZX at this point, and the four-wheel drive market had the Pro Cat, the Boss Cat, and the Yokoma Works rocking around in it as well. So there was a huge amount of competition up against this back in the day. Um, this buggy really had what Tamiya would refer to as a TRF touch. It was really trying to bring all that race pedigree into their top force chassis. I think they did a blooming good job. So it's a double deck of carbon fibre inside, we'll show you that later. They've got ball dips, ball dips in the front and the, the rear, both of which were lightened um, to be able to maximise the, the speed on the raceways. It had aluminium high capacity dampers, which are absolutely blooming fantastic. I love those. They were such an enjoyable build. I enjoyed those so much that um, I went out and bought some more. We had a one-way bearing, which mine is equipped with. Sorry, I smashed the camera there. Apologies for that. Mine's equipped with that one-way bearing, so the wheels just spin free at the front. Not sure how I feel about that, but we'll come on to that later. The original had universal joint drive shafts. It was a thing of beauty, and I still think it is. 
It looks absolutely incredible. Not for everybody. The original came with orange wheels. I've changed mine out for these silver ones because Mini OAG eyed them up and liked them. So who, who's a dad to say no to his daughter? Now these have been reread. There are some differences. So Kyosho decided to add a belt tensioner, which if you saw my review video, it's located back here somewhere behind the suspension. It allows you to tighten up the belt. That wasn't on the original model. Um, it also has threads on the shocks, which you can see on the front and the rear, that allow you to adjust the tension in the shocks, which is quite handy. Now those just screw backwards and forwards and allow you to play around with the tensions. Uh, it had different tyres and wheels. These aren't the ones that came with the kit. The tyres are, but the wheels were a, a one-piece white um, that was different to the original. The front and rear stays were replaced with these FRP. Hex screws throughout, full ball bearings fall out. Um, but it also came with a brand new belt cover on the inside, which you can just see through the window there, designed to keep more of the dirt out. But also, and more importantly, behind that cover there at the back is a slipper clutch. Quite a lot of additional redesign that's gone into this re-release. We also had the mounting for the front and rear stabilizers, which you can see on mine. I've got a head to put on them as well. So while Kyosho spent all that time and energy making and improving their Kyosho Optima Mid, Tamiya did not do the same for the Top Force Evo re-release. So the original Top Force Evo had titanium screws, which this one didn't have. As I mentioned earlier, it had universals. They replaced those in this with some constant velocity uh, drives, not universal drives, which is a bit of a disappointment. There were different tyres because they must not have had the original moulds or maybe just decided that the, the Super Gripper tyres were good enough. Um, and the carbon stays here uh, are now FRP instead of carbon. But that's not really a huge amount of changes. What they didn't go is the whole hog and identify how they improve the drivetrain or give us some nice little hop-ups in there as standard like they have done on the Optima Mid. But that's saying it still retains a huge amount of the original features. It's got those beautiful high caps, which I wasn't expecting to be as beautiful as they are. And also it retained the original design of the, um, the differentials, which I think a lot of people didn't think would be the case. Time for me to talk about the build experience. In terms of quality, there's a huge amount of similarities. The plastics are all good quality. There's loads of lovely extra nice bits like the aluminium and the FRP plates and the carbon fibre. This one was pre-painted, which was nice. Saved me a bit of a job. And the quality of the products throughout are very, very high. The same is also true of the Kyosho. If anything, I think that the feel of the Kyosho parts is slightly better. They do feel like they're slightly better quality um, and they could probably withstand a little bit more smashing and bashing around. But on the whole, both very, very similar. The presentation boxes are similar, nice blister packs. I don't have those anymore to show you, unfortunately, but you can imagine what those look like. I would say the Top Force Evo was an easier build. You built the front, you built the back, you attach it all to the plate, put the decals on, job done. There was a little bit more fiddling around with making sure the drivetrain was all right with the belt and the tension was correct and it was all sealed. A bit more finickety, but on the whole, you know, not too bad, really. Um, but like I said, I did like the pre-painted body. It made it a lot easier, a lot quicker to do. But what was nice about this one is I was able to change the look of it and give it a unique and personable feel to my Optima mid. Stripped with the bodies off, it's very easy to see why these two are regarded as being high-end hobby kits look at those absolutely wonderful so drivetrain differences on the top force evo we have front and rear ball diffs with a drive shaft between the two no slippers nice and simple just ball diffs and a drive shaft over here however we have a slipper clutch behind inside that lovely clear gearbox which you can just about see the outline of front and rear oil filled gear diffs and then on the inside of that cover and also on the underneath there are the belt drive to the front where we also have another oil filled ball diff 
I would say that the Kyosho drivetrain does feel more robust. I think it's helped with having that slipper clutch in there. That's certainly going to make a difference. Um, but the ball diff over here was a lot easier to assemble than I expected it to be. Having done or rebuilt the ball diff on a um, Madcap, I had heart palpitations when I saw this one because it looked exactly the same. And I'm pleased to say it was a lot easier and seems to be a little bit more robust. Time to talk about the shocks. So over here, we have Tamiya's beautiful high caps, which I absolutely loved. They went together really, really nicely. And they inspired me to rush out and buy another set of the VQS ones to go onto my Terra Scorcher when I get to doing that. They are really, really, really nice. Over here... You have Kyosho's gold oil shocks, which do have a really nice action on them. And I love those adjustable collars that come on these. What I didn't like is you filled these from the bottom. <clears throat> so underneath here, you have a, a screw top. You fill the cap from the bottom and then turn it over and screw it all together. What I didn't like is there's an awful lot of components that goes into there, awful lot of seals. Plenty of chance for things to go wrong. Now, I haven't had any leaks. Touch wood. No leaks yet. But people have complained about them leaking. I did fill mine up with green slime to try and make sure that I don't have any problems with that as we go forward. But actually, I think I preferred building these. Probably the nicest Tamiya shocks I've built. And I cannot wait to build some more. So, style. Which one do I prefer in looks well the top force has those beautiful new wheels that weren't on it standard i changed those but look at the profile of this buggy it is just stunning i can't get enough of it i love the way that the buggy just sort of tilts up at the end and swoops up it just looks fantastic and the decals really pop however with the orange wheels and that dark gun metal that I've chosen to do it in, I do think that the Optima with the black wing also carries a certain amount of charm. And it looks like a race machine, doesn't it? It really does look like it's built to race. What do you think? Let me know in the comments which one do you think looks better. So, there you go, an overview of both of these classic vintage RC re-releases. So which one do I prefer? Difficult question. Build-wise, I really enjoyed building this one. I really enjoyed building the Kyosho. The Optima Mid, I took it really slow. I did it over a number of weeks, and I just really enjoyed the technical wonder of putting this together. I found the Top Force to be a little bit vanilla, a little bit easy. It goes together well. It looks fantastic. But it didn't excite me like this one did to build. However, I do feel that this one is going to be quicker out on the track. It should be, really, shouldn't it? Because it was five years on and technology moved along quite a bit. You can see it's got a slightly longer wheelbase as well, which I've just noticed. Didn't notice that before. Um, it just feels like it's going to be faster. Um, I have had a cheeky little drive of this. You may have noticed a little bit of mud on the wheels. And... It's fast, and I'm only running a silver can on both of these because that's the way we start off on the Orchard Raceway. This is quick, right? Now, I haven't tried to drive this yet, but what I do think is this one's going to be more robust. I have a horrible feeling that we're going to see that sat on the bench at some point with repairs needing to it and me big borrowing and stealing parts because I don't have what I need. I think there's only one way to decide which one is better, and that's to see how they go out on the Orchard Raceway. Will one of these two be able to dethrone the Thunder Dragon? Will these be quicker than those modern four-wheel drive buggies that we've got to put up against them? Um, TTO2B, they should be quicker than a TTO2B. Surely they will be. Um, DFO3, will they be quicker than that? Um, will they beat out the XV01, which is going to be one of the modern four-wheel drives that we've got going? If one of those three get through to the finale, well, be one of them will be there. You know, how are these guys going to compete with those? All questions that we shall answer on the raceway. But for now, 
Hopefully you've enjoyed that video. Hopefully it's not too long. Thank you so much for watching, as always, and I will see you all soon on the OAG RC, and I'll leave you looking at these beautiful RCs for a little longer. Racing straight.